Hey fam, it's your girl IJF and welcome back to another episode of Awkward Discourse where we embrace the beauty of uncomfortable conversations. So before we get started, um, let me just complain just a little bit, just to be a little human. Um, New York City, we got a problem. I, you know, I love home. I love New York. I'm back from Austin, Texas. Um, let's not talk about Texas. But anyway, neither here or there. The homeless, houseless issue. Um, we have the migration um, conflict that's going on here in New York. So there's a lot of people coming in from other countries um, and basically fi- finding a, a safe haven here, I would say, which I'm okay with. You know, I'm okay with people because... If truth be told, most people who are coming to this part of the world, it's because this government did a little something, something, something. You know, we're not going to go too deep. Um, Let me back up off the mic. Um, But we're not going to go too deep into that. But the point being is um, the migration problem is happening. We have the houseless situation happening. And then we have the expenses of New York just going up. You know, we're in a recession. Um, I was looking at a website for housing, right, uh, for a one-bedroom apartment. And it was saying that I think you have to make from 93000 to 150000 you're jealous you ain't got no- now don't get me twisted there's a lot of people who are earning high five numbers and high six figures um shout out to the tech girlies and some corporate girl the point being is the cost of living is going up uh we have the migration situation in the houseless situation the only thing i can say about that is new york city we have a problem and you should probably just hire someone like me because i could I, I could make it all happen um <laughs> Let me stop. But seriously, um, I would like to say that there's enough money in New York to kind of isolate or, you know, to make these problems kind of not go away, but basically um, handle it. Um, again, there's money being spent on things that we don't need. We don't want, a.k.a. these ultra new robotic police devices. Hang it up. Flat screen. Oh, speaking of that, um, let's talk about some noteworthy things that happened this week. So Megan the Stallion versus Nicki Minaj, queen of right. So let's start from the beginning. Um, last week, was it last week or was it this week? I don't know. I just, oh, it was last week. It was last Friday, Nicki Minaj, and I know I'm late, but... I'm late, but um, yeah, Megan dropped the song called His. I'm listening, Um, and she was dissing almost everybody. I don't know who everybody is, but basically, she had a one-liner, Megan's Law, which took Nicki Minaj for like a world spin. Like, homegirl was like Nicki. I mean, I'm not here to say that, you know, she shouldn't fight. <clears throat> I'm a big fan of both of these women. I think this is what we want, right, in general. Like, good versus, shout outs to Megan the Stallion once again. Um, we want competition. We want creativity. This is why when Nicki Minaj was fighting with the other girlies, I'm just like, I'm bored. You know, because they, most of the girls that she was fighting with for such a long time, those girls are not smart girls. They're not on Nikki's level intellectually. Um, just, you know what I mean? I'll just stick with the intellectual because all the girls, I was going to say physically, but then the girls are getting surgery. And that's okay. Um, if you have the money to do it in maintenance, do you, boo. So, yeah, she went back and forth with Megan. Um... Okay, as an actual Barb, I'm I'm a millennial Barb, so I'm up there in age. I'm in my twenties, but point being is, uh, it was a no for me, Nikki. You know what I mean? Nikki is too damn smart, too damn, um, you know, decorated. She's a decorated rapper who deserves to do more than what she gave us. What she gave us was, it wasn't trash. It was just terrible. She just kept repeating some of the same stuff she said on Twitter um, or the same stuff she was ranting about in her little studio. There was some shots in there. I'm not going to explain it, but if you go watch the um, Impressive Channel, 
literally line by line Nikki's song um Bigfoot but at the end of the day I'm just like Nikki you you're better than that you know what I mean the way that she was going at this girl bringing up her mom it's just like it's whack it's corny I didn't expect this type of behavior from Nikki um I'm still a fan of Nikki I don't care what y'all say I don't care I don't care I'm still a fan of Nikki but I, I think she's better than that even though she's proven that she isn't and the thing is she want us to be on her side. I'm a fan of Nikki, but also when Nikki's wrong, she's wrong. You know, she's wrong. Sometimes she has the, oh, I'm a black woman, save me black woman. And then she's like, you black bees. Like, which one is it, honey? Is your sister soldier or is you? Mm, let me watch my mouth. Um, are you just a Karen in, in hiding? Um, I'm going to keep it, you know, PC. Um, but yeah, Megan and Nikki, again, Megan Thee Stallion has won this round. That's just my opinion. It is what it is. I'm not saying Nicki Minaj can't come back, but at this point, I think she's kind of giving everybody like a foul like taste of who she is. And again, Nicki Minaj has the right to do whatever she wants. You can't step on someone's foot and expect them to react to you in the way that you want them to. AKA, you can't do something to someone and expect, you know, things to be on your uh, guidelines. You know what I mean? So if I tap somebody and they decide to slap me or punch me, that's, well, different human beings. You know, I, that's how we're reacting to things. But at this point in time, I don't know, Nikki. Like, my mom's, I, again, I'm still a fan, but the way you're trying to go at, Megan and bring up her height. I mean, she's tall, and the guys are still trying to get up on top of that. You know, they're still trying to climb it. But mm, what else? You're, you're trying to call her a hoe, which, you know, whatever. You know, as a black girl, as a woman with aunties and moms, you know how our old school families are. You know, being promiscuous is not the way to go. Um, having a child out of wedlock, having no children at a certain age, you know how it is. We know the aunties, and I hate to say it, but, you know, Nikki Minaj is an auntie. She's in her 40s. So we know how these 40 and up, or even 30s and up people think. Um, not all, not all, but I'm saying the majority of people that I know who grew up in a certain traditional household, this is how they speak. Throwing your um, roster at you as a way to diss you, which whatever, whatever. I, I would still take that, but it was just like, girl, no, you're better than that. But, hey, we'll see. Oh, my God, this one shocked me. Gail King was on that uh, podcast, um, not like mine, because mine is a show. Gail King was on the podcast with those three guys. I think they all used to be sports players. I don't know the name of it, um, but someone hook me up in the comments section if you care, because I really don't. But um, yeah, Gail was on that podcast with those three men, and she admitted that she gave $4,000 to a guy after knowing him for only like a couple of months, literally a couple of months, two months. And I'm just like... I barely want to give a man forty dollars. You giving him four thousand? I mean, damn. I mean, I'll date you if you're just giving four thousand dollars away like that, you know. <laughs> but uh, for me, to, I, I guess I love that women and people in general are okay with being vulnerable, especially when it comes to like loaning out money or finances. Money is a touchy subject for everybody, but money plus my dating partner or who I'm romancing even more touchy and sticky and then I don't know maybe this is just old school of me or just you know very anti-feminism or anti-woman call me what you want whatever but I don't think women should give men money unless it's like their child or something like that I know please don't eat me up in the comments please please I'm, I'm not a pick me um but I just don't really believe in um let me back up hopefully I'm not too loud but I just don't believe in women giving men money I mean why I mean not just why but no 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 I mean I don't mind helping a man out when he's going through some tough times and maybe we're married and you know I just got to be the warrior, the soldier, I got to be the backup to my partner. If you're doing okay, I suppose, and out of nowhere, you just asking me for money. Sure, if I got it. But also, before I give this money over. Here you go. I'm going to need you to sign that over. Quickly. If you want the money. If you don't want the money, you don't have to sign it. <laughs> 
a little too much yeah um anyway let's move on to the last you know noteworthy topic um this week um so i was reading that elon musk is with a, with a true african stand up okay <laughs> is now implanting um, chips into people's head. Well, they've only tried it on one person um, through the company of Neuralink, I believe. And um, he's proposing that this chip that's implemented into people's brains are going to help them to be like, I guess, uh, help with the motor skills, help them with movement and all that good stuff. But people, this is where the issue comes in. In 2022, this same company um, tested this chip on a chimp, a chimpanzee, this chip on a chimpanzee, chip, 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 allegedly, 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 okay, everything I just said was allegedly, because no one's going to, you know, Tasha gave me out here, Um, I ain't got it either. This company tested their chip on a monkey in 2022 and the actual animal died so for me this is 2022 we are in the year 2024 that was only two years ago now i'm not saying people can't perfect something within a two-year time frame but perfecting um to me shouldn't include death i know you know everything is a trial error but i mean one, it's the moral and ethical way of looking at things. Maybe I'm I'm just that way. But you're like trying like electronic chips on animals and they're dying. Now, again, allegedly, this supposedly only happened to one monkey. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure they're going to the continent to get those, you know, uh, science experiments, uh, monkeys. Okay? I'm just saying. Just so many things. I mean, remember, Elon Musk is the true African in the building. Right? You know, he's South African. He's an African man. But anyway, yeah, um, if you guys are trying to get into that, sure. But hopefully when that thing becomes required, I'm out. Guinea 224, what's up? Um, Because hopefully you guys know better than that. You know, we, mm -mm, I hope we know better than that. Especially with this history that we have with certain groups of people. But anyway, moving on. Um, one last thing on that chip, I personally don't like it because I feel like it's going to be used for other things to control people. You know, if you're controlling people's limbs and how they move and act, that control can also be very, very, um, it can end up being devastating. So that's where my fear comes in. But you know, what do I know? I'm just a millennial who's living in a world where, AI was just movie plots, you know, it was like, you know, I am legend and what's that other one? Black Mirror. It's like these things are, again, were things that we saw in movies, but now they're slowly becoming reality. Let's actually get to the main topic, y'all. So I was on TikTok and I saw this uh, video trending um, where it said broke men like BBL. I ran. I ran. Because we live in a world where, you know, we have people who are saying if you're not, if you don't have a BBL, you're not a bad B. There are some saying if you do have a BBL, you're a, a sloppy B. I mean, it's so much going on in the BBL world. I didn't even think we'd get to a world where... People were going to the doctors to get a big butt. Like, I remember growing up where there will be scenes in, like, um, movies, especially, like, rom-coms where certain groups of women will be like, oh, my God, does these jeans make my butt look big? And then if the person they're speaking to says yes, they'll start to cry and feel bad about themselves. But then again, I I didn't get offended because me and those other groups of women would never look the same in clothes or without it. So it's like, oh. I wouldn't want to look like that either. But moving on, now in 2024, people are literally like risking their life, using all the money that they have or scamming to get BBLs, which stands for Brazilian butt lift, which (laughs) it was such an underground thing. Now it's literally like, it's like breathing, you know, it's everywhere. But anyway, let's get to this video. Um... Let's watch this video together and then let's talk about um, what I think about this. Your natural body shape or your surgery body shape. 
will change the type of man that is attracted to you, at least based on his socioeconomic level. And let me show you. Socioeconomic class actually have to do with the type of man that is attracted to your body and why? Let's figure it out. We have the wealthy class, right? And they typically tend to be attracted to more slender bodies, a physique, a nicer physique, right? The reason I like that is for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, a lot of their reputation is on the line. Who, who they're married to, how that person is moving, how that significant other is, how outside people view them. Everything comes with reputation when, when, when it comes to being that wealthy, okay? So essentially, they understand the power more of who their significant other is and how they represent them. Literally. Then of course we get to the biological factors like a woman with a nice physique and she's skinny, you can actually see the structuring of that, the natural way her body would fall in clothes, etc. right? And it also signals youth to men. We hear it preached all day, every damn day, right? And actually this one's gonna be hard to accept because when you have a more voluptuous body, it's more overtly sexual, okay? So basically the man doesn't really get the privilege of like the classy look or like you act this way publicly but he knows you in a different way privately. Like that line kind of gets blurred and it's not anything that somebody who's naturally built like that has like done wrong. It's more so other men can visualize you in a more sexual way a lot easier than they can with somebody that has a petite body all right and that's gonna move us over to poor when it comes to this type of man uh you know how there's like uh being hood rich right mm. let's let's let, let's make it that so essentially because this person doesn't have much to show they're gonna make what they do show gaudy and so essentially because that thing is gaudy it's right in front of your face you can't ignore it you can't whatever right so essentially that translates to the type of woman that they are attracted to also has more of that upfront in your face you can't ignore it type of sexuality all right because essentially as they escort you around places socially all that other stuff it's a huge signal to someone else look who i am fucking right now look who i have access to right now just like easy to see and the last reason that the poor man tends to be attracted to uh, a more voluptuous overtly sexual body one he's not doing much else with his free time and he's outside work that's the only way he's making money that's not tends to be the only way he's applying himself so basically with his free time he, he he's gonna want to have sex bam okay second reason the woman is doing um very much like domestic work in the home right that's a strong contribution of hers because he can't afford any type of assistance even when it comes down to like eating out a certain amount etc so for her when he sees her outside of that there's not much that that woman is expected to offer him as far as like uplifting him or moving him to a net another level they are in survival mode literally i want you to understand that okay so because they are in survival mode the woman basically is offering sex and domestic work to him, okay? So essentially, the more sexual she looks, the more appealing she is to him because that's, that, that's one half of, of, of basically her value. Middle class, that's kind of like a anything can go type of situation, okay? Um, it's a mixture of enough resources, enough intelligence, and enough ignorance. So essentially for them, they're going to be choosing a partner based off of what they see in media the most subconsciously and uh, what kind of reflects their natural desire because they don't have too much on the line as far as reputation but they also have enough resources to care about what person they're getting and how they're reflecting them and stuff like that but not enough to where they need to be controlling the type of person that they're dating so at that point you can just date ideally who you desire so before you get that bbl please evaluate what is this gonna do for me what is my goal okay and i know as women we be lying to ourselves saying oh my god it doesn't matter what men think blah blah blah, blah. but uh eventually if you want to be with somebody you're gonna have to give a damn what men think okay so in the video she talks about three categories of men there's the wealthy one there's the middle class one and then there's the working class or she says poor um Let's start with the wealthy. She's saying that with wealthy men, um, having a slender, nicer physique um, represents, she says having a nicer, slender physique represents youth. It represents health. 
And to her, she said those are what's considered like the nicer bodies. I don't know what slender, nicer mean. I'm assuming someone under the, in my opinion, someone who's like slender would be someone who's like 120, 130 and under. But I could be wrong. But when she mentioned like the type of men supposedly, allegedly, I don't know. We don't know every wealthy man in the world. But she's saying that uh, with them, it's also about re representation. So, you know, their women represent them. And again, slender, smaller bodies mean that you're young, you are healthy, and that's just what's considered hot. Now, again, for me, I don't totally agree with her video in general. There's some things that I'm like, mm, mm, mm. okay, sure. But yeah, the examples that I think about when it comes to like wealthy men and them like in slender bodies, I thought of women like Janet Jackson, Rihanna, Naomi Campbell, Eve, uh, Melody Hobson. Now, those are all black women, right? And they're all, in my opinion, slender. I mean, Naomi Campbell is a, she's a model, not just a model. She's a supermodel. She's a top model. She, she's not in the class of the other girls, at least not these modern day ones, no. But um, I think about those type of women like Naomi Campbell um, and how she, the other girls that I've named, they all dated like wealthy men when they were talking wealthy white men or wealthy Arab men, wealthy black men, whatever the case may be. But they've all dated like supposed billionaires. I don't want to be in no one's pocket, so allegedly. But to me, I thought that that was a very interesting take that she took on the whole slender body and the type of men who are attracted to those type of bodies. Because it kind of made me think of hard wig, soft life. I'm the center of attention all the time. It's always my show. Like, you're the extra. I mean, I love you. And I don't know too many thick, hard wig, soft life girlies. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Okay, so let's talk about the middle class. The middle class, we're not going to be talking about that for too long because when I think about middle class and the way that she described it, it was very brief. She said middle class can go either way. Usually men who are in the middle class, they're going for what they kind of see on their social media. Um, I guess what they see in their social life, right? That could include social media. But like what's going on in their social life, what they innately like because they see it a lot. And like she said, you could be with middle class men, they can either date men, women who are thick or slender whatever the case may be, or even a little bit of both, thick, thick, slim, slim, thick, slim, thick. It could be in the middle. Um, and it kind of made me think of like doctors, nurses, teachers, firefighters, um, police. Like it made me think of what I would consider middle class. Um, even janitors, sanitation workers, you know, anybody who's making high five numbers or even six, you know, middle class. Um it made me think of those people. And because I live in reality, I do see those type of people with all types of women, you know, whether um, the woman is slender, short, tall, um, no hair, you know, in installation of wigs, weaves, whatever the case might be. Um, I definitely see that, again, in my normal life, just living, chilling, going around places and hanging out with groups of people who fit those job titles. You know what I mean? There's really no, yeah, that's just my opinion. And then lastly, she talked about the boys, the boys who are broke, the broke boys, the brokies, the working class, the poor. Woo, let's, let's, let's slow down with this one. Cause again, there's parts of her videos that I, I agree with her, right? I would say, 60% of what she's saying, I agree with. 40%, mm, which is, let's just go on. So she said for the working class guy, he's poor, right? He's powerless. He's not classy. He's more sexual. And showing off and being gaudy is what the broke boy or what the poor guy, I keep saying boy, forgive me, broke men like. And when I thought of examples of these type of people, I thought of like scammers, you know, street pharmacists, um, rappers, athletes, um, gangsters. Those are the type of men that I thought of when he said, I'm sorry, when she said poor. But y'all you know, like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said athlete rappers and drug dealers now when you think about those three distinct titles nine times out of ten a lot of those people make a lot of money right i would even consider some of those categories like athlete rapper 
drug dealer. Some of them are even considered wealthy. In my opinion, they're considered wealthy. But I would say nine times out of ten, when when it comes to like some of these rappers and athletes, um, they don't have like longevity when it comes to their money. Right. Some of them financially, they're not all the way there. So they make a lot of financial mistakes. One, two, um, they're spending it very like rigorously because they're just getting accommodated to it. Um, right. And let's break it down. I think about basketball players. Everybody's not a LeBron. Everybody's not a Michael Jordan. And speaking of those, I would consider those very not anomalies, but very few wealthy basketball players, athletes who are wealthy, in my opinion, and I don't, I don't know. I'm not in their pockets, but Jordan, Michael Jordan is a billionaire. And the woman that he's with, she doesn't have a badonga donk. She would be considered slender, right? Same thing with um, LeBron James. His wife, Savannah, she is very slender. She's slender. She's natural. There's nothing extra about her. She's not a very voluptuous woman, but she looks good the way she is. For me, um, I don't want anyone thinking that I'm choosing sides. I'm the girl who grew up watching America's Next Stop Model, you know, and Takara was one of my favorites. So I love all bodies, all people. That's why I was like having an issue with the video. I'm just like... I don't know, some things that you're attributing to people with thicker bodies and what you're attributing to ones with slender bodies is kind of classist and also racially weird, but that's just me, you know what I mean? But okay, back to the broke guys, right? So scammers, we know what they do. They get your credit cards, you know, they're doing fraud. It is what it is. Fast money. So it's here today, going tomorrow. Um, who else? We said scammers, drug dealers, athletes, rappers. Most of these rappers, again, financially, they're not all the way there. You know, one minute they're hot, the next minute, you know, they're doing 50 town tours, like Lovers and Friends. Why is, it, why is there so many people on that Lovers and Friends um, flyer? And nine times out of ten, most of them are one-hit wonders. Not all, but most, you know, and I'm not trying to be shady. I respect people and what they do in their craft because I can't do it. So whatever I can do and you can, I will always have respect for that. But, again... I'm kind of like further and away from the topic of broke men liking BBLs. Yes, scammers, rappers, athletes, most of them have fast money. And nine times out of ten, when you see them with a woman, um, especially in today's time, the woman, they all look the same. They got the body done. They got the lashes. They got the bust down to the waist. Ain't nothing wrong with that. We love it. We love to see it. But also we see in such a quick instant, these men are moving on to the next bust down, big booty you know, five inch waist chick. And it's just like, okay. But she's saying because these men don't have real power, their power comes from the woman that they date. And because that power comes from the woman they date, they're there for, you know, sex, domestic work, um, and stuff like that. And she said some of them are in survival mode. So because they're in survival mode, they know that this chick is also dependent on them. Video, um, the man is in survival mode, so he goes for these BBL bodies, or actually, she kept saying voluptuous bodies. So basically, she's talking about the hood rich dude. So she's not, I mean, let's just remove the athletes now and the um, entertainers, which they're all entertainers, right? If you're a rapper, athlete, you know, whatever. So she's, she's talking about the hood dudes. Let's go in and zero in on that. The hood dudes. She's saying that they like, Voluptuous bodies because most of them are powerless. They are in survival mode. They know with this woman that they are showing attention to, making her feel, I guess, all la di da. You know, he can get sex out of her and domestic work. Growing up in Brooklyn, you definitely saw a lot of men who were with voluptuous women, right? Some of them were struggling, some of them weren't. That's where I think that's where I think that's where like the hesitation comes from me because it's just like I've seen men who are in the hood. Um, with the voluptuous women and they don't take advantage of that but I think if we're being realistic it's probably more men in the hood taking advantage they taking advantage of women right because nine times out of ten most of these men who are in the hood race aside I should say the hood um because hood could be where Eminem is from he didn't grow up with his damn daddy and he don't be like his mama allegedly living in an impoverished neighborhood or area space nine times out of ten most of these men right they don't have male figures they don't have men in their life right for keeping it a buck the man is probably dead in jail uh probably on substances we can go on and on and on 
you know, but nine times out of 10, yes, most of these brokies, these broke men, they do rely on women, aka their moms, their aunts, their grandmas, their sisters, their girlfriends, right? So I think that's where I was just like, yeah, there's parts of you that's correct. And in nowadays, to get a BBL, you don't even have to get a BBL. I mean, how many times do we hear about women dying on like, um, tables or in basements because they're getting syringe shots of God knows what so they can be thick so they can be built that way right like like especially like a lot of sex workers like strippers right strippers are mostly getting attention and love by everybody but the people who make it most obvious are the um rappers the scammers the athletes right again now some of y'all who are coming in now are probably thinking again, some of those people could be considered wealthy. I'm talking about the normal ones. You know, we've all met basketball players who probably, they don't make that much money. You know what I mean? Let's just keep it a buck. I hate to say it, but there are some people who are living regular nine to five jobs who are making more money than athletes. Even some certain social influencers or doctors, nurses, teachers, no shade. I'm just I'm just being honest. You know, that's why most of them like to go like play basketball in Russia or Tunisia. I don't know. You know what I mean? And then like I said, the rappers Nine times out of ten, they're always getting busted for fraud or gang affiliation, you know. Let's just keep it a buck. But anyway, moving on. Point being is, um, yes, most broke men do rely on women. And sometimes these women are people that they do have romantic relationships with, like their girlfriends or, you know, the little side thing. You know, maybe she ain't a girlfriend. She's just somebody who don't mind helping him out and she don't, he don't mind helping him out either uh so everybody it's a give and pull at this point um unfortunately in my opinion the woman is losing more than the man but that's that's neither here or there moving on i felt like for me i had an issue with this video a bit now again i said that i did agree with her percent of the time i'm just gonna say 50 um but the parts I didn't really like was, so the parts that I really wasn't a fan of when it came to this video is her talking about um, I, not judging bodies. When she said that being slender is only associated with wealth, which again, the examples that I gave, those women are slim women, but I'm pretty sure there are some wealthy men who are dating thick women. At least that's what I see sometimes on the internet. And you can't believe everything you see on the internet. But to me, this the judging of body saying voluptuous women or BBO women are attracting brokies or um, they're attracting men who don't really care for them. At least that's what I was getting from the video. For example, you go to somewhere, you know, you're dating some guy who's an oil miner or um, who owns diamond mines. Sometimes those people are black people and they like black, thick women, you know, Um I've seen it in the clubs. Now, again, that's the club life. I don't know what they do in their real life because people are, some people are different, you know, at night than they are in the morning, okay? But the judging of the bodies, because she's saying that poor men like that who like these thick bodies, they don't have power, which they don't have influence, they don't have money. But in my opinion, realistically, I do feel like a lot of, a lot of, Trends, a lot of everything that's considered it comes from the hood. You know, everything, the way we speak. I mean, nine times out of ten, when you hear Gen Z speak, it's basically African American dialect. It's colloquialism that's used in our culture. So I do feel like even if you are considered working class or poor, um, and to say that those people don't have power, maybe not financially, right? But I do think socially, yes, they do have power. People from, like I said, most trends that are on in today's time um, come from from people who are usually in impoverished situations and they make it do what it do. You know, we do influence people, um, working class, poor, whatever the case may be. So I didn't agree with that. But again, uh, like again, I said, I, I agree 50%, but I just thought that was such an interesting topic to say. Um, and they was eating her up in the comments, not me, because I feel like she has the right to think what she think. Again, do I agree with 100% of everything she said? No, but I think it's such an interesting dynamic that she brought up and I think she does have a like a master's in economics or business and money so I think she's like look from personal experience and from my studies I'm telling you this is what it is and I definitely can say from what I've seen with my own eyes with certain groups of men when it comes to like their financial status 
it's right. Is it right all the time? Of course not. But um, yeah. Are y'all with her? Are y'all against her? What are your thoughts? What you what, what y'all think is going on? I mean, are you like me in the middle? You kind of see, you kind of don't. I don't know. Let me know. The first question is, how do you approach online dating and what are your tips for making your profile look more appealing? So approaching online dating, I would say for one, um, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Have I done it? Yes. Has it been successful? Eh, I guess so. But my first tip would be like safety first. I know the girlies love when somebody sends them like a car so they can get ready and just, you know, <laughs> va va voom. I would say no to giving out your address, obviously, right? I mean, I know men do it all the time when they're trying to hook up, but girls, you know, we're better than that or non-binaries, whatever. Um, but I definitely feel like, yeah, no to the address. You don't need to know where I'm at. Or if you're going to do someone picking you up, just go like two or three blocks by your house. Don't give the person your exact address. Um, two, I would say be honest, right? I think honesty is the best. Like I hate when I'm on dating profiles and it says like the guy is six one or six three and he's really five one, five two, five three. So it's just like we're already in a virtual space. Less and, and right, we're already in the virtual space and we're trying to meet in a physical space. I need you to draw me in. And draw me in is not lying to me. Like it's okay to be your height. Trust me. And, I'm pretty sure there's other things that can also add on to that. So just be funny, charming, dress nice, um, kind, stuff like that. But yeah, let's just be as honest as possible because again, we're already meeting in a virtual world and hopefully we're dating where you're intentional if you want. And if you're not, be honest about that too. Um, and yeah, just be honest. Uh, the third tip I would say is I'm gonna need y'all to use recent photos. Now I've been seeing the men's, the men's, the men's do this a lot. Honey, you can't be showing photos of you in high school, then college, and then one photo of you now where you bald in and you kind of doing the little side pro. Not working for me, boo. Again, that kind of lines into the whole honesty thing. Like, baby, just use recent photos. Again, make yourself clean yourself up, whatever the hell that means, you know, put some lotion on, don't come on the the social webs ashy, just use recent photos, you know what I mean, like, go outside, take a nice little photo, no one's telling you to be extra, you don't have, I think men have less obligations when it comes to dating in general, especially even when it is virtual, um, as one guy told me, he feels like um, dating online, even though he says dating online is like um, DoorDash for like dating. He gets to order a girl. And I'm just like, that's a very interesting take. Because I'm just like, who's dating you? But everybody is, everybody got somebody, right? All right. Okay. So uh, the second question was, how do I make my page look appealing? Not too many filters um, on those recent photos. Just be you. If you have a gap, have a gap. If you have dark skin, have dark skin. If you have no hair, make it work you know what i mean but nice photos um yeah good clean photos right um people i'll say people and people's me i want to see everything i want to see up here oops i want to see up here i want to see like the whole body you know you standing or sitting somewhere i just don't want to just keep seeing like these passport photos right Passport bros, I'm talking to you. But um, yeah, uh, yeah. So good photos. Uh, another thing to make your page appealing, prompt on the dating site that you're using. Use one of them to kind of give a little bit of who you are, right? So people don't know, I'm sorry, so people don't completely know what they're clicking on, right? Give them a taste of who you are with some of those dating prompts. Like, you know, two truths and a lie. It's like, oh, this person has dark humor too, or this person has this type of humor, you know, whatever the case may be. So I would say my second tip would be another thing <clears throat> to be appealing, in my opinion, use some of those um, prompts because it's charming. So good photos, have some charm. And I think lastly, I would say telling people what your goals are. They don't have to be too personal, but you know, I think goals also shows what your intentions are, right? So, you know, if my goal is, yo, I'm just trying to have fun. I'm here for, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. That's the goal. That's, you're trying to make it, you know, 
it is what it is. You're trying to vibe out. And I think it's good that people know that so you can attract what you want. Um, so, yeah, those are my tips for having an appealing website and just dating online in general. Right? Right. Okay, fam, as always, thank you so much for watching, and please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and also let me know what's on your mind. What are your thoughts? What did you think about, <clears throat> what are your thoughts on any of the topics that I talked about? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Are you indifferent? Let me know. As always, see you next time. Bye.